And I'm going to go up to Filter and go to my Portraiture plugin. And the way this works, uh, you have a before and an after, uh, before at the top and uh, after at the bottom. You can always zoom in on it. And if I click my mouse on the bottom picture here, like you see I'm doing, it'll actually show me a before and after. And basically, you can create a mask so it only applies it to skin tones. You can select your skin tones. You can add sharpness, softening, warmth, brightness, everything you can imagine. I tend to use the default uh, smoothing methods, which they have, which is default, normal, medium, and high. I rarely want to kill my pixels and ruin everything on her skin, so I usually stick to default and normal for my presets. In fact, with her, I'm just going to go default because I really don't need that much smoothing. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. The plugin is now going to be applied, and what's great, it's automatically going to create a mask over here. And so you're going to see this mask where it's actually only applying the effect to skin tones. And so you can see that right here. And although there's a mask, just in case it doesn't, it misses the eyes, I usually go in here with an eraser uh, with a soft brush, 100% opacity, and just go over this and just kind of erase that effect over the eyes to make sure I don't lose anything in the eyes. The eyebrow, the eyelashes here. Okay. It looks pretty good. A lot smoother than we were before. Before and after. I'm going to go ahead and flatten my image now. And pretty much the skin looks great now. It looks a lot better than it did before. Uh, we got rid of some of the stipening on the skin, some of the little stiples. Uh, but again, we're not we're not uh, mashing our pixels and making her look like she's made out of this queen or something. So, And finally, I'm going to go into my color correction. Uh, very simple. I'm a guy, I love high contrast and really bright colored images. So without going through and doing a bunch of curves adjustments, very simply duplicate my layer. And on my duplicate layer here, I'm going to go up to my layer style and change it to soft light. Simple, right? Look at the difference on how much she pops. Uh, the blacks are blacker, there's higher contrast. Uh, the one issue that this does cause though, if you can see in her hair, it's really black. Um, we're losing some of our darks here. We're clipping them. And we don't want to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and lower the opacity on that layer, that soft light layer. And when you lower, when you play with opacity on layers, don't ever run it from 0 to 100. Uh, because it really will confuse you and it's such a shock on your eyes, you'll keep it. So what I recommend is that you start at 0 and you slowly, like, go in 10% to 20% increments until it slowly brings it up to where you think it looks great. And her probably about about 70% is perfect. So I'm going to keep that. I'm going to go ahead and flatten my image. And now the colors look vibrant in that, but again we have that problem with the hair where we've lost some of our detail in the hair. And so I'm going to bring that back out. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate a layer again. And on that duplicate layer, I'm going to go to my Dodge and Burn tool. She keyboard shortcut is O for that. And I'm going to go to Dodge. And I'm going to go to Shadows with an exposure of about 10% with a really nice soft brush here. And I'm just going to slowly scrub over these dark, dark areas and just kind of bring them up a little bit. And if there's a little clipping, that's okay. Like I said, that's my personal preference. I like dark images, so. And a lot of contrast, so I'm going to leave that right there. Just kind of bring that up. And now we're going to play at the highlights, so. I'm going to take it to midtones. Take it to midtones here. And again, with 10%, I'm going to start just. Lightly go over one or two strokes over each highlight band here. And you kind of see the highlights of the hair. They're kind of like bands or ribbons. So I'm just going to slowly go over those. Hit her bangs here. Hit along the side here. And if you have to, get a nice small brush and actually stroke it with the grain of the hair. And just kind of pull it along there. There we go. Simple as that. Let you see the difference. 
before and after. Before and after. See, very subtle, but makes a big difference in the end. Now, the next last thing I'm going to do as far as my corrections is go in here and uh, bring out some of the color of the irises just a little bit. And I'm going to use the same tool, uh, the Dodge tool, set to midtones with an exposure of 10%. I'm going to go ahead and get a nice soft brush and uh, shrink it down to so it's about the size of the margin of the irises here. So the distance from the edge of the pupil to where the white of the conjunctiva starts. So I'm just going to go in here and with a couple strokes. I'm just going to follow the crescent moon shape. And we're not going to lighten these a lot. I mean, we're not trying to make her a vampire or anything. We just want to give her just a little bit more luminosity and flare in the irises. There, that looks pretty good. So there's a before and an after with the eyes and the hair. Looks pretty good. And if you notice, her eyes, the whites of her eyes are really already bright. And that's because uh, one of the golden rules when, as a photographer is that you got to light the eyes. And it's one of those things that you have to get right in the camera. Uh, there's so many guys where they shoot a mediocre photo, go into Photoshop, and they're masking the whites of the eyes and going in there and changing the hue and saturation of them and the lightness. You know what? I don't have time for that. Get it right in the camera and light the eyes. Light the eyes. Don't get them in shadows unless you're shooting a zombie or something crazy where you want them like that. So, so it looks pretty good. We're going to go back down and flatten our image. And we can creep out here and see the finished quite a bit better than what it was before. So, And now to finish this, we're going to go ahead and sharpen the image. As with any digital image, uh, a little bit of sharpening goes a long way. And I feel that most of my images get sharpened, if not all of them. Uh, again, with Photoshop, there's dozens of ways to sharpen in Photoshop. Uh, the way I like to use is using a high-pass filter. Uh, I found this a lot better than the Unsharp Mask. I've had a lot of problems with an Unsharp Mask. And I don't have time to go ahead and play with channels and luminosity uh, luminosity sharpening. So I'm just going to go ahead and use a high pass filter. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate my background layer. I'm going to go to Filter, Other, and High Pass. The key with the high pass filter is that you want to zoom in so you're at minimum 100% of the image. And you want to add just enough to where you're revealing just the edges of the image. So obviously that's way too much. So I'm going to bring it down. I'm lowering the pixel rate. And see where we're at right now, you can actually see the, the pores of the skin and the lines. We don't want that. So all we want to do is sharpen the edges of stuff very lightly. Generally, with my settings, it's usually between 0 0.3 and 0 0.7 pixels. So I'm going to go all the way to 0.3. And that's looking pretty good. If you look at her eye here, you can see not too many of the skin pores show on. It looks pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that at 0.3 and hit OK. And I'm going to go down to that layer, that weather, which I applied the filter, and I'm going to change that to Overlay. And there you go, that sharpens the image. And if you want to go even sharper, uh, you can always change that layer style from overlay to hard light. It'll even give you more of a crisp image. But with her, we're just going to leave it an overlay. And if that's too much, you can always go to the layer opacity and drop it if you need to. So I think it looks pretty good. Her skin pores aren't stiping too much. Uh, the eyes are, eyes are a little bit more crisp. And so I'm going to go ahead and flatten my image and go ahead and save that out and that'll be it so let's go ahead and show you the final before and after and remember these are very subtle differences here there's nothing that's you know way out way out way out of the margin here so so there's the original image and here's the finished image so you can see the color difference obviously we'll show go in here to show you the skin real quick zoom in on the face the before and the after I hope you've enjoyed this uh, I'm Big Ben with BTS photography uh, you can see more of my lighting videos and tutorials at www.btsphotography.com as well as on my YouTube channel and Vimeo channels